Hey guys, finally home. It's about eight o'clock. Um, long day, messing around with a '70 Chevelle at the at the shop today, uh, along with some other vehicles. Um, I'm gonna try to get you guys some video with the Chevelle if I get some time. Anyway, I wanted to talk about something else though today. Uh, if you guys that are out there messing around with oscilloscopes, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of things you can buy, right? A lot of probes, uh, different types of things you can buy for these uh, for these oscilloscopes. And a while back, I did a video on how to make a pressure transducer for yourself using um, a project box as a uh, as a unit, and you know, um, utilizing that for the for the components, right? So I used a I did one um, where I, I used some uh, pressure transducers you can buy on eBay. I think they were Honeywell or whatever. But uh, in any case, uh, I'm still messing around with that a little bit here and there when I have some time. But there was something that I wanted to do that I haven't done yet. I, I've been looking at these sensors that are that are for like exhaust pulses and intake uh, pressure and stuff like that. And what I decided to do was I, I wanted to try to make my own uh, and see how it turns out. So I made a couple of them, and I wanted to just share it with you guys real quick here. It's going to be a short video probably, but uh, knowing me, it won't be that short. Anyway, this is what we're using as a, this is what we're basing it on, is this sensor right here. This is called a piezo sensor. This thing produces its own voltage when uh, any kind of pressure or vacuum source is applied. And this will pick up, this is very, very, these things are very sensitive, and they come in multiple sizes. So I'll show you here. There are, um... There are a number of different ones. I utilize these larger ones here simply because I was able to find uh, a housing that would work with this size of a sensor. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is basically the design of the sensors, uh, of the uh, unit, and how easy it is to make it yourself. And I'm going to put a screen cap here from just a quick uh, pressure test that we did on the uh, the, pul the pulse uh, test that we did on the exhaust system uh, on a Jeep that we had in the shop. So I wasn't doing any real testing with this truck. It was just happened to be in the shop for like an oil change or something and uh, some service work. And we, I had the sensor, you know, there, and I wanted to try to just. Uh, well, actually, I had the picoscope out using it on something else. So I just decided to plug it in and see how it works. So I got a waveform, just a picture actually, but uh, it's it's. Um, you get an idea of how clean the waveform is. Anyway, this is what the sensor looks like when it's uh, assembled. Okay, this is what we built. This is what I made. Um, three eighths uh, fitting, and I have actually. I have. I want to show you exactly. I'm going to show you in a minute. I'll get back to this anyway. All right. So this is obviously plumbing supplies, right? That we used, and check out how simple this thing is, right? Okay, this unscrews, and this brass piece that I put in here, the reason I did that is because the sensor is inside of this unit, the center unit here, right? And it's it's glued in, it's epoxied in, okay, perfectly stable, it's not going to go anywhere, it's not going to move. Um, what I wanted to do was, I want the, I want the incoming pulse from here to be as close to that hole in the sensor as possible. I don't want it to be erratic. Okay, I guess you could say. Now, I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience with these sensors, but I'm just going off common sense here. It seems to me that it would work better if you have the if you have this as close as possible to the um, to the sensor. So this unit, when it's screwed in, is right up against the. You don't have to tighten this down real hard. I mean, just put it in. This is this now is one piece straight through to the sensor. Okay. And you can actually, you may be able to see it on camera, I'm not sure. But you may be able to see the sensor through there. It's dead on. It was drilled on a mill. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the everything is true. Um, maybe I'm overboard, I don't know. Maybe I'm going a little crazy with it. But I want to make sure that if I'm going to do something, I try to do it right. And the other side of it, where the jacks are for the, um, for the scope to plug in, okay, are just drilled out. Uh... And obviously installed here and all you have is I've extended the two wires that come already soldered to the sensor all I did was extend them and I soldered them to the corresponding um, posts or jacks rather posts jacks on the back right and now all you have to do is plug in your 
scope leads to here okay so on the Pico you would just put the black to black red to red or whatever you're you know whatever you're using uh, to red and you're going to get your waveform now the way I set this up is uh, if this sees pressure the waveform is going to go up first okay if it sees vacuum it's gonna pull down first so you can I, I don't know whether or not that's how you're always going to need to use it I would assume it is it makes makes sense to me in my head but I'm sure some of the more experienced guys out there would have something to say about that um, in any case you could always switch the leads and it would reverse it so uh, I did test it it works okay and I have another one here it's the same really exactly the same unit uh, just a little dirtier and stuff I'm gonna keep this one for myself this one here is going to go to a friend of mine um, that's close by some of you guys know him as uh, Keith from New Level and he's gonna be taking this one and he's gonna do some testing with it and see what he thinks about it and um, this one here I decided to attach a hose on it like I said I ran this in an exhaust system to get a waveform and uh, the fitting uh, the, you know obviously 3 8 hose like I said uh, on the you know on the fitting then uh, this here, I just did this so that I can hook up to different size uh, lines if I wanted to go into a vacuum line or whatever I wanted to do with it. Uh, you know, it's obviously a conical design, so this was made on the on the lathe. Uh, I've made multiples of these out of aluminum and um, uh, some sort of machinable plastics that I have downstairs in the basement, and uh, they work really well. I use these on the smoke machine a lot. Uh, because sometimes I want to go into like um, the intake manifold say on the on the uh, on the vacuum hose coming off the booster and the the ones that they come with usually on the smoke machines are like this size so I've made some that are three-quarter um, you know diameter up at the top and uh, they'll easily fit like half inch hose or whatever you need to do with no problem so just a little hobby right machining but it comes in real handy with automotive stuff too. I've made some cool stuff with it uh, for automotive. So anyway, uh, this is my setup right now with this thing, and I really have not had a chance to do very much testing with it, honestly, guys. Um, I'm gonna leave most of the the, the testing with it to uh, Keith. I guess he's uh, he's the man with this stuff, and I'm a novice at this point. So, um, you know, we're uh, the this t the, at least with these kind of sensors. I don't I don't know a whole lot about. Uh, using them I I guess I know the basics right trying you know for misfires and stuff like that whatever but uh, from what I'm hearing there's a lot of stuff you could do with this so anyway I hope that it works out really well because these sensors go for a lot of money apparently on, on online um, from what I've seen they're quite expensive and if this works where it's usable for us to do diagnostic work I'm gonna show you what I wanted to show you before uh, these parts were all bought at, that I can't speak anymore. All these parts were bought at a local Ace Hardware. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. I'm not going to write all this down. I'm just going to show you the receipt. Okay, this is for two units. Now, mind you, the sensors are not included in this price, and the jacks are not included in this price. They were bought from different sources. The the sensors were available on I think eBay of all things. Uh, the uh, nipple obviously is homemade. The jacks for the um, the banana jacks are actually from a company called uh, let me think now mpja.com I believe it is um, and you can buy them from them or allelectronics.com I believe has them as well very cheap uh, they come in really handy as a matter of fact and what I want to show you here is if you guys can get a shot of if you guys could see this uh, my total is fifteen dollars for uh, the parts here and the most expensive parts here are obviously the brass which were uh, were the um, were the brass parts which were 379 each if you can see on there I'm trying to read this thing um, the rest of the stuff here was a dollar a dollar 19 and a dollar 49 respectively okay for the three components that I used to make the body of this uh, tool so what it comes out to is basically seven dollars and sixty cents or whatever for uh, one uh, housing with the nipple, and then the uh, the jacks which you buy in uh, 
can buy in bulk from, from these companies. You can see they come in these bags here. Uh, I didn't want to use these these other colors because uh, you know, I, pre I prefer to stay with red and black because it's just more basic, all right? Positive and negative and, you know, up and down, right? For pressure and vacuum, whatever. So you can use whatever colors you like. Uh, if you're using a Pico scope and you're always going to use this thing on a certain channel, maybe you could color code it to the channel, it's, you know, whatever. Um, again, that's all preference. Uh, but this tool total would probably cost you 10 to $12 to make. Um, so if it works, why spend whatever it is for the tool? If you don't really need that tool, right? You know what I mean? If you don't really need to spend all that money, uh, you could have something that's functional for a lot less. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to send this thing out to uh, Keith or he's going to pick it up from me or whatever. We're pretty close to each other and, uh, you know, it's not a great distance there. So it, should, it shouldn't be a big deal for him to get his hands on one of them. And maybe he'll, uh, if he has time, if he could ever find any time, maybe he'll test it and be able to do a quick video on it. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, if it works out, cool. If uh, if he thinks it's uh, it's not, you know, usable for whatever reason, then at least I'll get the feedback from him and we'll go from there. But uh, the signal to me seemed very clean, uh, you know, uh, so it should. I, I would imagine it's going to be pretty usable. But uh, I'll put the screenshot up, guys, and um, we'll go from there. So let me know what you guys think, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for everything.